My friend Michael Agabau is the most prolific songwriter I know. He's always writing catchy new tunes. And in this interview, we talk about that, uh, as well as the songwriting, uh, the, the recording process and different things that Michael's been learning. Uh, he's also experienced incredible grief, incredible loss in his life, as we discuss. And he turns that sorrow into song and part of his walk with God, wrestling with uh, some of these difficult things. So I know that you'll enjoy our conversation. It will minister to you if you've experienced grief or loss in your life. It will also uh, maybe perk your interest uh, if you're a, a, a budding songwriter or if you like to record or even if you're experienced with that kind of stuff, you'll probably enjoy this conversation. And I hope also you'll uh, listen to his music wherever you get your streaming music from. Uh, check out Michael Agabau. <laughs> Hey, Michael. Hey, Brian. Good to see you. <laughs> <laughs> let me, uh, hold on, let me, uh, okay, so, there you go. So how was your uh, getaway? Did you have a good time? Oh, man, it, it was, uh, we had a great time, uh, seven, eight hour drive to Lake Tahoe. And um, yeah, um, the soundtrack for our trip was your song, bro. Uh, <laughs> clean getaway. But you were right, after uh, a few, a few days, uh, <laughs> my son uh, my son and my wife were said you know change change the song you know <laughs> <laughs> i know i was like don't don't make your kids hate my music but it's amazing bro like you know i, I kept listening to it and just layers and layers of uh, great tracks um you know for those who haven't recorded you know you put a lot of thought and um, time in you know, recording this album, bro, it's taking this a different, different side of you, you know, and... Oh, thanks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so let me just interrupt you and say, uh, yeah. so if somebody's watching this video, yeah. um, I'm Brian Craig, you probably know that because you probably are seeing this <laughs> on my channel or something, but this yes. is my good friend, Michael Agabau, who is, uh, we've been friends for, what, 20 years, 22 years, probably? Right? Yeah, yeah. Um, Since we met. We I know Jameson was and... a baby. Yeah, we got he baptized in '99. Yeah. Okay. And uh, yeah, he's a songwriter, worship leader, mm -hmm. also works in the medical profession. So I know this has yes. been a crazy time for you. But yes. um, but anyway, I just thought we'd talk today about songwriting and um, recording mm -hmm. and worship leading. Maybe maybe the medical world too, if he wants to talk about that. But just uh, yes, it's great to get yes. to connect with you. So he's talking about this album that I put together. Um, under a band name called Ties to the Light, um, and uh, nobody really knows about it because it's a new new band name. <laughs> but yeah, I was he... searching on iTunes and uh, I put J. Brian Craig and you know, yeah. Show up in it. So Michael is on his way out of town. He was like, sent me a text saying he was kind of, what did you say, like stressed out or a little worn yeah, out or so, needed yeah. to get out of the city. Yeah, I feel like, you know, I find myself uh, this past few weeks just, you know, that, like the last song I wrote, uh, The Reasons Why, you know, why am I doing all this stuff? Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, almost a, more than a year of the pandemic, and it just took a lot for me, bro. Um, you know, just the isolation, you know, the fear, taking care of uh, COVID patients, you know, um, you know, just just you know, just seeing them struggle you know and mm. it was traumatic it was traumatic uh the december and january was really it was, it was crazy i've never seen anything like that in my 21 years as a registered nurse you know uh, it was like a war zone you know um, mm. and they can only fight so so much you know and they give up you know um wow uh, giving them a hundred percent of oxygen and it's just uh, you know, they, they stop fighting, you know, and next thing you know, they're gone. Wow. And, yeah. So and December and January were the worst of it. The worst of it. Yeah, that was that was in, like in we, our in we, our uh, in our community. Yeah. Yeah. And we we ended up uh, carrying up most of uh, a heavier load because, uh, you know, we went, we went up to seven to eight uh, patients per one nurse. And uh, the 
California state law is, you know, one to four, one to five, but because of the pandemic, you know, we went to one to eight, one to seven. Wow. So it was, it was, and no CNAs, you know, no, no help. It's just us registered nurse and um, taking care of the COVID patients, you know. Wow. But uh, there's a and drastic you, And you now. kind of have a specialty in, in dealing with respiration, right? Don't you? Uh... Well, I, I work in medical, surgical, and uh, telemetry, which is car cardiac patients. But uh, because of the surge, our, our unit was uh, changed to a COVID unit. Uh, okay. Because there are just so many cases, you know. Um, we even use the, the, the recovery room, the... LND, labor and delivery room, you know, wow. patients in the hallway, you know, 20 hour wait in ER. They just gave them oxygen, you know, so uh, it was, it was really traumatic. You know, it was, it was crazy. Mm. And, and on top of that, you know, my fear of, um, you know, my, my health. And right. Yeah. And your son, your son is probably more, uh, with his, uh, more at risk, so, right? With his con yeah. condition. Is yes, that true? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. He has a, a very rare genetic anomaly. It's called a uh, Fanconi anemia. And it's only a thousand cases worldwide. And, uh, God gave me two. Hmm. And as you know, you know, um, I lost my daughter, uh, Katrina from it, uh, oh, almost 10 years now. It's going to be 10 years this year. Uh, yeah. yeah so wow. uh, but, yeah well so what so, i did was uh, yeah go, go ahead. ahead yeah so I, I slept in the garage for months and months and that mm. was uh really um mentally you know uh, it was uh it was challenging you know, the depression mm. coupled with anxiety so it was i'm pretty sure um a lot of people felt like that you know the mental aspect of uh, this pandemic and, yeah uh, yeah so were you still sleeping in the garage in in december january um no uh, i already got my i got vaccinated uh december 23rd that was oh good my first dose so uh, i felt confident you know um and but i this this room uh the additional room that uh we built after Katrina passed. This is my isolation room, my mm -hmm. <laughs> music room, my reading room, uh, and I sleep in that bed sometimes, right there. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Look at all those guitars, man. Oh yeah, dude. I gotta. I, I gotta catch up with you. My wife is like, "Why do you need another guitar?" I'm like, "I don't know." <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> That's what they call. I, I just have. I only have like one good one, and then I have like a, a nylon string that I got at a, a a garage sale when I was, you know, 18 years old or something. And uh, yeah, I still yeah. remember your Takamini, man. Yeah, I still have that yeah. one. I gave that to my daughter. Yeah, yeah. actually, yeah. John yeah. Ivy gave that to me. Oh and, yeah. Uh, and I, I was like. I can't accept this from you, bro, because I didn't have a good guitar, uh -huh. and uh, I can't accept this. And, he, and and we were kind of going back and forth, and he was like, "Bro, don't rob me of my joy of giving." You know, <laughs> John remember, is such uh, a giving person, so he gave me that yeah. guitar, and and it really did. That's when I really started writing. Uh, I had been writing some songs for for the church to sing, but um, just a cappella, you know. And so that's when I started playing the guitar along with the songs and stuff, and. Uh -huh. So that's kind of a key moment in my life. I feel like when he gave me that guitar, but yep. I gave it to my daughter because she she was learning guitar, so it's hers now. Yeah, and well, I let a few people know. borrow it along the way. Different people that were trying. <laughs> so yeah. I, I I let a few different people borrow it uh, in the spirit of John, but um, then they yeah. gave it back, and I gave it to Cora. Well, they said I have a severe case of gas. Uh -huh. uh, guitar acquisition syndrome. You know? <laughs> you that, you know? Oh man! So um, one thing I've <laughs> so so does each one have a different voice, of course, and uh, yeah, 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 different um, purpose. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I promised my wife I won't buy any more guitars, but uh, you know, uh, um, the wood different. Um, yeah, uh, I have a spruce top. Most of my guitars and. Um, and the one that I've been using is the old mahogany, uh, the B15. Okay. I mean, the triple O 15. 
yeah. So I sold my um, my Taylor guitar. I have a GS8 because I want to copy you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. uh, I, had, I had to admit that, you know, I can't, I can't play like you. And it's it's like, um, uh, it's too it's too much of a guitar for me. You know? uh, oh, really? What, what, <laughs> yeah, it's, a, it's, just, it's like a sports car, you know. <laughs> <laughs> too much gear, you know. Uh, but I found out um, just accidentally uh, a few years ago that my I, I play better with uh, a, a nut width of uh, one and eleven sixteen, and most tailors are one and three quarters. Oh, okay. So once I I felt I felt the the comfort in my my my, my fingers my hands you know I, I kept buying. Uh, um, same nut with, and I tend to like Martin now. You know the higher end Martin because the the cheaper one sounds horrible. You know, mm. and and so all my guitars are Martin now, and I yeah. That's cool. <laughs> no, I don't. I think you're a great guitar player. I I I love your <laughs> your finger picking and your little you know your your uh, your style. I know you've been doing a lot more finger picking. I I know yes. I noticed some kind of. A little more sort of Jack Johnson style lately too, where you'll like um, play a melody with your guitar, you know, yes, how Jack Johnson yeah. does, and then sing that same yeah. melody. Yes. Like yes. there's one of your songs. So here, let me uh, let me play the one I'm thinking of. Uh, I think I have to share my screen in order f for you to hear it. Uh, let's see. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this one. That sounds very Jack Johnson to me, like oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, I remember that. the beginning of it. Which, gu which guitar is that? That was the Taylor, actually. Oh, okay. Oh, I like Taylor, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I had to sell it and to get another guitar, but I miss that guitar. Uh, so this is my, Michael's music. Uh, he's got these four albums, and then you're releasing, starting to release some singles, I noticed. Yeah. There was one more. I don't know why it's not populating, but it's called Jesus. Uh, oh, I've never seen that one. Yeah. Um, Can I find but, it? Uh, it's not a, for some reason, I think I have to call CD Baby and now. Uh, um, yeah. Yeah. I see a video. The video, yeah. It's not popular. Yeah, let me uh Yeah. So five and one um one so, single yeah. <clears throat> so the GS eight, why do you say it's a sports car? Like I I didn't even know what I was doing. I just knew I needed to get a new guitar because I had I'd put an album together called Remain in Me, which was um all songs from Jesus' perspective to us, and I recorded that with my Takamini. And um, I was just, you know, different people were getting me, giving me feedback. And uh, James Selesky was like, bro, you got to get a new guitar. <laughs> you know, James is a, he is a, um, he's a guitar player for Turning Point uh, in the church yeah. there. And he's a carpenter. He's, he's like, everything is excellence and pristine with him. Like he, he's an incredible carpenter, you know, he makes just amazing, just flawless stuff, you know, but he's actually a drummer first. Uh, drummer, but also singer, worship leader, guitar player, and uh, he was like, "You got to get a new guitar." That was his feedback for me for that album, and uh, so you know, it's because the Takamini is an okay guitar, but it's you know, kind of entry level or mid range or whatever. Yeah. And so I was like, "Okay, I, I need to get a new guitar," and so I just went to Guitar Center. I was just, I, I'm just gonna play guitars. And John uh, McClellan was the one that recommended Taylor because he said they're easy to play. They kind of have good action and uh they're typically stay in tune and stuff so i was like okay so but i wasn't i wasn't i wasn't uh preferential to taylor i was just i'm just gonna i'm not gonna think about how much it costs i'm just gonna play different guitars and uh -huh. see which one resonates with me and 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 uh so that that was the one that uh I came away with was that gs8 but i i I liked it because it had a big sound. I think is what I like. You have a GS six, right? You have a cedar top, yeah. I think it's a GS eight. Yeah, yeah. Let me see. Yeah, I think you have a cedar top because. Uh... Let me look. 
so it, it was uh it doesn't have a a, a pick guard it's probably yeah. made for like finger picking uh, and uh it's probably more made for finger picking uh, let's see Where does it say? I think it says. I th my eyes aren't very good. I think it says G eight five in there. Oh or yeah. GS five. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. It is. Yeah, I think GS five is cedar top. I think you have cedar top because mine was. Yeah, GS five. I think that's what it says. Yeah. Yeah, your top is more warmer. Yeah. 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 Yeah, it's um, it it does because it doesn't have a a, a, a pick uh, guard. Yeah, pick guard. I've kind of done some damage and then had it <laughs> fixed through the years. Yeah. Cause, but yeah. uh, and it doesn't you're, you're, have a, a cutaway, so you know. But I never do this stuff up here, anyways. Yeah. Plus, you're you're an aggressive strummer, man. Like I can never yeah. do what you do, you know. Um, yeah, I try to uh, emulate it. I try to <laughs> imitate it, but you know, <laughs> yeah, the timing is your right hand is really um, in sync. I mean, um, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's it's probably I don't know that might come from maybe a Dave Matthews band, you know, Dave Matthews yeah, influence yeah. back in the day. Uh, <laughs> Dave Matthews described himself as like a drummer who plays the guitar, and. Yeah. Uh, I feel a little like that. Like I really, um, I, I I feel percussion. I feel you know feel rhythm. So I notice that like when I'm um, tracking, my guitar rhythm is better than when I try to play drums or something else. Like my yeah. the, the rhythm on my guitar is usually right on or just w the groove I want. And then whatever else I played, I kind of have to fix the timing, <laughs> especially. So, so on your, on your albums, do you, do you put the drum uh, tracks? Uh, it depends. It depends so yeah. yeah, I, um, it, de like, so that album, so we were, we're going to be all over the, if you're watching this video, we're going to be all over the place. With, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> with our con no, I'm, I'm just it's flow of consciousness so back to, yeah. this is good we're going back to what we started so yeah. so michael was going out of town because he's been stressed out by all this stuff he's been talking about yes. and, and he needs yes. to get out of town so i sent him a link to a video called clean getaway which is yeah. one of my ties to the light songs love it bro i love and it and yeah. it's uh it, it was really written about evergreen colorado which is mm -hmm. where my uh wife grew up um but really anywhere in the mountains just or out in nature is what it's about yes. just kind of getting out of and it's uh it's literal in terms of just driving out of town but it's also metaphorical just kind of needing to escape the um grind you know and get time away with god or but these songs on the ties of the light album the that where they came from was uh wanting to write songs that weren't necessarily worship songs or, or praise songs or you know church songs but more sort of my, from my own spirituality or, or thoughts about you know there's a couple that are a little political um, you know stuff that's sort of more just secular world but but it's also with the spiritual bend to it like a, you know like a U2 song or a Coldplay song or something like that so anyway that's uh, so I sent him that video and that's what introduced him to this so so that album um there's some songs that have and that album uh i i was working more on learning good production because with with my worship stuff i wasn't so concerned about production and you know when it started like with the be, me, be with me lord album i was telling this to john the other day like I, all i had was a adat which is like a, a <laughs> digital uh it, it recorded digital audio on a vhs super vhs tape uh did you ever have one of those no, you recorded. Oh, my you first, recorded your, your yeah. Songs thank you on there. for you know. Yeah. Because of that, bro, uh, inspired me uh, to to record as well. You know? Yeah. You're the first one to record uh, my song, actually, uh, "Freedom." Oh yeah, yeah. The, the, the two chord song. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's a great song. Yeah. So so, anyways, I I wasn't with the worship stuff. It was more about I want to share these songs. Not you know, I'm not the best singer. You know, in my production, I don't have this the availability but it's more of wanting to share the songs and even still you know when i record worship songs a lot of times i release them even if they're not you know they're just a demo really but um 
But with the ties of the light stuff, I was like, I want to get it closer to, you know, uh, professional. I obviously I can't get there, but something that could like live on a soundtrack or or could be on a TV show or something. So I learned a lot through trying to do that. Um, and wow. but the, where those songs came from was also just jamming and and playing with some other guys and trying to. We I wanted to try to do some shows around here, just even to be able to reach out to people and stuff, you know, like I can't, I wouldn't want to go play in like a club in Santa Monica and, you know, be doing great among the nations or something, you know, it's like, <laughs> I need some, uh, some other songs, you know, so, yes. so, uh, so anyway, that's where those songs came from. So Chris Vallejos was one of the guys that was jamming with me. So some of the drums on that album are Chris Vallejos, um, playing. Um, so, so clean getaway, he's playing on that song. But others are uh, just me playing drums or uh, a combination, you know, of uh, I, I like the, you know, the, the Logic drummers are there's all these, if uh, ama- you know, amazing drummers on Logic that you can choose from that will kind of do an automated playing yeah. along with you. But um, but they sound a little too pristine or a little too um uh, it's almost like, you know, it's almost like CGI, right? You know, CGI is like almost too real or it's like, uh, you need, you need to dirty it up a little bit. Yes. So I like to, if I use some of the, those, those drums, I like to try to dirty them up with some of my own drums or, or something that's a little more organic, but anyways. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it, it, it's really beautiful. Bro. Um, I was, I kept listening to it and the guitar part is just, uh, you played all the electric guitars, huh? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, there's one song that um, Daniel played on, uh, the uh, song, uh, I don't know if you listened to the whole album, but there's one called yeah, Start did. at the Beginning. He played the like the lead lines on Start at the Beginning. Yeah, that's but, the last song, yeah. Yeah, yeah. but besides that, I um, played all the electrics, yeah. And, uh, yeah. So uh, how did you record that uh, clean getaway, man? I'm still kind of because what what I um, notice is if I if I put too much track on my recording, you know, it's just it's just not as clean, you know. But you captured it really, really clean, you know, um, uh, and balanced, and it's not muffled, you know. It's, it's mm-hmm. amazing. Yeah. Oh, thanks. Yeah, I I I think your sound is is getting better and better, like. <laughs> Your YouTube videos. I was going to ask you what yeah. what you're doing for your YouTube videos because your voice and your uh, yeah. your guitar sounds so good. Is it just a large diaphragm mic that's yeah, right that's off? Right. I have it right. I just use uh, two mics. Uh, oh, you use two. I okay. You, I remember you were using a uh, rod mics, right? So I I, I try to copy that. I don't, <laughs> know if, I don't know if you're still using that, but it, it is a. Uh, this one is a cheaper one, the NT one A, and the other one is NT one thousand. Okay. Yeah. So uh, one is kind of aimed at your voice, and one is aimed at your guitar. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they so, sound great. Um, yeah. Um, and then just so put some just, reverb and some compression on there. Yeah, I use for all my recordings now. I use uh, you. You also. I also use Logic. So um, I just put for my vocals the natural voice natural vocal then i just usually um use a jazz vocal room mm. that's my favorite yeah then i lower the reverb to maybe 18 20. jazz vocal um, room so that's a preset that's a preset yeah that, that's my favorite and then this is for your I, vocal or for the guitar uh it captures the guitar too okay. no actually just for my vocals okay uh, but it, uh, it captures the guitar as well yeah uh, and then I um, I compress all the tracks using um, I like the what was that? Uh, what's, it, what's the name? I like to use the the classic VGA VCA. Mm. Oh yeah, for the compression. For the compression, and then I I use it for channel EQ. To, I equaled all the tracks with uh, ballad. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, so so that's another preset. That's yeah. another preset. Presets yeah. are are nice, 
because you can just try different ones. And especially if you don't know what you're doing, like I don't feel like sometimes I know exactly what I'm doing. Yes. So. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. I'm new to this. So. <laughs> yeah. There, it's yeah. overwhelming, right? It's overwhelming. And it's sometimes if you're yeah. playing with knobs and you don't even know exactly what you're doing, if, you know, you yes. can just. So trying different presets can be a good way of just finding a sound that you like. Yeah. Yeah, and even then, on, um, on your master bus, you know, yeah. with different, different yeah. uh, settings, it's it's you can try different things. So ballad, I, uh, ballad, ballad huh? yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, and then um, I'll, I I will master everything with uh, LNR. I, I subscribe to LNR. Oh yeah, yeah, I yeah. do the same thing. I uh, is that Lander? Is that the same thing as Lander? Lander, yeah. Okay. Lander is yeah, I do the same thing with Cloud Lander. Bounce. I le really like Cloud Bounce. I was yeah. using Lander before at the studio. I did some stuff on. So I think that whole Ties of the Light album might have been mastered. Oh, no, that thing. I think that was mastered with Cloud Bounce. Anyways, yeah. yeah. It's cool, that the tools that we have nowadays. Yep. Pretty yep. amazing. So, yeah, I don't know. I don't remember what I did with that song. I think I used two mics for the guitar. Mm -hmm. And then... Um, uh yeah i think i i used two mics but uh it's dad gad tuning dad gad yeah so i don't know if i remember even how to play it <laughs> yeah yeah it so was dad gad is d d a d g and then you change this one to a You change that one to D. Beautiful tuning, man. I, I wrote a few songs. So it kind of, it just kind of writes yeah. itself. So I think yeah. I use a capo to bring it up a little bit yeah. and then like the chorus is Yeah, play Beautiful, it. bro. Bless you. The, the lyrics, my wife is commenting, you know, the way you write songs is just, you're a great storyteller, bro. And it's just so much, um, uh, so much substance instead of, uh, compared to my, my songs where, you know, I missed you, I love you. you know? <laughs> uh, no, you write great songs, bro. So... Yeah, and the thing I appreciate about you is how prolific you are. You write so many songs. I, you know, I. Uh, it's I like had to. You write what? Anxiety. At least a song a week, right? What yes. You say? Yes, yes. This, this past few months has been crazy. I don't know. Um, it, it's all God. I don't know how how I do it. It's a gift from God. What I believe is that um, the song is already out there, and God just yeah give give, give us a. An, open our ears to listen to it, you know, and right. it's, it's comfort, you know. Um, so you feel like the song already exists. You said the song's already out there. It's already, yes. and then you're just like tapping into it. Tapping into it. Yeah. I feel like it's like writing the, 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 the when, when the disciples that wrote the gospels, you know, um, mm -hmm. they were, <laughs> yeah. it was, it was the whole spirit that guides guy, them, you know, because when, when I left church and I, you know, I've been, um, I denied Christ three times like Peter, you know, um, <laughs> and, uh -huh. but I hope that will be the last, you know, you know um, and I was, I was struggling and I was listening to my old songs and it's like, who's that guy? You know, mm. I can't even, I can't even, um, you know, can't relate, you know, so it is all God, you know, um, mm. and once he revived me again, and, 
uh, now I can start feeling things again, you know. So it's already there, you know. Um, it's a gift. Everything's a gift from God, you know. Yeah, um, I feel that way too. I feel like it's it's from God for sure. I, I can't be responsible for it. It's like I can't sit down and just go, okay, I'm going to write a song now. Like usually it's just there, you know, it's just mm-hmm. already there. But um, I appreciate how your lyrics are... Um, they're they're very psalm they're very psalm ish psalm like uh, a lot of them are straight from the psalms a lot of the yes, language yes. is right from the psalms um and i think most of them you know are are pretty psalm like and uh so and i know what you mean about your own songs being a testimony um against yes. you <laughs> yes <laughs> or holding you accountable i think that's good yeah. you know but there's that so, story so... in the in the bible where god, god um told Moses to teach the Israelites this song so it would be a testimony against them or whatever. So, so I think about that sometimes. But And some of them are prophetic in some ways because, you know, I would write a song and then I would experience that struggle uh, a few months after. You know, it's so amazing. And, uh, um, um, and the, the special ones are, it, it comes out, you know, of a dream, actually. I would, mm. would be asleep, then I hear a song and what i do is i just grab my phone and then record the, 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 whatever i hear yeah and then then i wake up you know i try to write and finish it you know and i lost a lot of songs because i was too lazy to uh, to record it you know yeah <laughs> i i'm the same way like or you're you're in the middle of the night and you think oh this is such a great song and i'm i know i'll remember this maybe write down a few lyrics yeah. and then next morning you yeah. just it's lost, lost so yes. i've lost a lot yes. of them too I, i'll just pray god give it back you know you want me to <laughs> yeah. do something yeah. with it yeah that's um, cool yeah there's a couple songs of mine that i wrote while i was wh- which ones do you remember that you um, were sleeping then you woke up sleeping, uh that was a give uh and also it's not it's not on my album yet it's okay. not it's not okay uh there's um uh, Oh Lord, the King rejoices in His strength. Which album was that? Um, uh, I think that was. Yeah, you have so many albums. I don't or uh, songs. I don't know how you keep track. <laughs> yeah, um, it was based on Psalm nineteen, I guess. I have to look it up. <clears throat> the ones that I recall that were like that um, for sure. Here am I, send me. We we had a. Um, we had a a, a, song, yeah. a conference for uh, college students called "Here Am I, Send Me," and that that's obviously from the the, the call of Isaiah that that line. But um, there's an old hymn called "Here Am I, Send Me" that's like "Here am I, Lord, send me." I don't know if you've ever heard it, but the yes. the word it's it's very uh, it's very old style. It's like there is much to do, there's work on every hand, I'll cry for help comes ringing through the line you know it's just very like old style so i was like i just not seeing these college students getting into that that song Uh you know so i was like i need we need something different and um i had this dream it was like this apocalyptic dream that was like the end of the world (laughs) and uh you know there was like floods and fires and you know you know people were there wasn't many people left and it was just and uh and for some reason that song the here am I, Lord, here am I, send me. That was in the in the dream, you know, that, that wow. like those chord changes and stuff. So <clears throat> same thing in the middle of the night, I got up and <clears throat> wrote that or, or made a little recording of it or whatever so I wouldn't forget it. Beautiful, yeah. I know it's, it's one of the, times. the conference, right? The church conference, here am I, send me? Yeah, it was a, yeah, it was a, a campus conference years ago, and then fun. they kind of kept that theme. Yeah. But... Uh, Anyways, so you so you mentioned revive. That's one of my favorite songs of yours. <clears throat> revive, oh lately. man, with Rachel Lickfelt, yeah. Oh, it's so good. I I like. Uh, let me play a little bit of that one. Let me find it here. I gotta share my screen again. Yeah. Uh, let's see. It's yeah, that on song this is new uh, album, right? I think so. Yeah, that one, yeah. Second oh one. yeah, here we go. Yeah, I just it's a uh, <clears throat> this is kind of like more where I live these days. It's just kind of uh, more reflective, a little sadder. <laughs> I don't know if it's because I'm older, but 
because of the pandemic too. <laughs> exactly. I just like sad, folky music. But, but I love the melody. It's so good. It's like, it's like you said, it's like already was already there, you know? A lot of your songs have a familiarity to them where it's like, I feel like I've heard this song before, you know, like, and that's good to me. That's good because it's like, you, you, as a listener, you can connect with it. Like you kind of know where it's going. Um, I like, like working with Rachel. Say what? I love working with uh, Rachel Lickfeld. Um, She's great. We, yeah. She's great, yes. She's a true so soprano. And, uh, you know, when we started the, the Whittier Church, uh, hopefully we'll meet again soon. You know, last two years ago, we, we were part of the mission team in uh, Whittier. And so she's always been um, part of the music ministry there. It's the drums and the guitar and the vocals. Okay. So I, I like working with her. She's a songwriter, too, you know. And, it's amazing when you work with other vocalists, you know, the way how they um, take it higher, you know. Um, yeah. Gives you a different aspect of the different flavor, yeah. But yeah, but that song is about my grief. Uh, you know, you're searching for hope. You're searching for love. You're searching for her, but you know, she's not I'm talking about my daughter, you know. Mm -hmm. that was yeah, if you're listening, uh, Michael lost his, his older daughter. Katrina, Katrina what, yeah. 10 years ago or it's gonna be 10 years this year yeah oh wow yeah she has the same uh disorder that that his son does but um and that that was part of right was it re related to that uh her bone marrow <laughs> yeah, yeah Franconia anemia they're just uh, high risk for uh, um, cancers and bone marrow failure and all types of um cancers you know uh it's the genetic uh instability um it's you know it's, it's not strong so um yeah there's no cure so what i did was to honor her uh, just kept writing songs and uh, before the pandemic we were doing a night of hope uh concert you know to raise awareness and to uh and to uh support um Kingdom Kids and the Lighthouse Church. The Lighthouse Church. Yeah, and her, her, um, you, you know, losing her comes through in a lot of your songs. I mean, there's a lot of songs you, yes. I mean, I don't know how many, but it seems like at least 10 or 20 songs you've written yes. about that, or you can imagine it's something you carry every day. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I wouldn't wish this to even my, my worst enemy. The, the the grief it was it was horrible um and it took me two years um to to um finally get out of from that uh that pit you know um, yeah because every day i would wake up and um i, I just cried uncontrollably you know and and the mm. and i i wish and I was hoping that the following day I will, it will, I will be better, you know. But uh, it just kept, uh, yeah, coming at me for for months and months, and 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 it, it was uh, it was horrible. It was horrible. Mm. I'm so sorry. Yeah. Well, and, some, yeah. Something I appreciate about you is, uh, you know, you you're a very I'm sure nobody's ever told you this, but you're a very emotional person. I am. <laughs> you feel things very deeply, right? And, yes, uh, yes. But I like that you take that to God and you take that to, you turn that into music, you turn it into like a, it's like, it seems like you, it's very much like the Psalms, right? In the Psalms, there's, I mean, half the Psalms are, are laments or, or are negative yes. in some way, yes. you know, and, and you take those, you take your grief to God, you process it with God, you know, he's there along with you. You know, and uh, he'll never get tired of hearing about it, or you know, <laughs> wanting to hear your heart, and and so I just appreciate how you you love so yeah. deeply, you feel lost so deeply, but you you process that with God, you know, and um, mm -hmm. I think that's really great. So, is there anything like you would say? Because obviously, with this pandemic, there's so many people who've lost loved ones, or 
Yes. Maybe people who are experiencing grief for the first time, you know, that have never really lost a loved one. There's been, you know, over 500,000 people die in our country. So many in our church, we've lost people. We um, And like, there's one brother that lost his mom, his, his brother, his brother's wife, you know, another brother who lost his uh, father, I mean, his mother, another um, brother who lost his mother, you know, there's a, a guy in our church who passed away. Um, and his daughter is in our church and his daughter's mom. And so, you know, there's been a lot of loss. So, uh, yes. is there anything that you've learned over these 10 years that is helpful or that is not helpful or, you know, with grief or I'm sure you're still on your journey, but yes, yes. Um, if it, the first two years, I felt like no one could, um, could, um, relate you know, and, and people, you know, the disciples, they, they, your close friends, they, they mean well, mm-hmm. but sometimes they, they say the most hurtful thing. You know? uh. Like, uh, oh, no, uh, I remember, you know, another uh, a brother mentioned, uh, shared to me, you know, um, oh, I remember uh, grief, you know, I lost my, my brother uh, a few years ago, you know, or my uncle, you know, it's, uh, it's different, you know. It's just, yeah, different than sometimes your daughter. The, yeah, yeah. The, the, they say there's no worse grief than than losing a child because it, yeah. it goes against. You know what I mean? You losing a parent, it's like, well, you know, you're gonna lose your parent, right? That's, but and, losing a child is the worst. Yeah, and the, the struggle was, you know, when when God says no, mm. you know, He said no to uh, to Jesus at the Garden of Gethsemane. You know, He said no to Paul. Mm. with a thorn in his flesh and you know, said no to to david you know when you know to, to not for him not to build the temple you know uh Moses not to say promised land you know mm. what will you do what will you do you know if if god says no and, yeah yeah will you still worship him so i struggle with that um mm. but the, i believe that the antidote to to grief is hope mm. um Someday um, there'll be a great reunion. You know? Yeah, and I always um, and the Bible says that you know if you if you're strong, maybe 70, 80 years old, even ninety, you know. But what comes after that, you know? Um, hmm. So our life is like a, a, a line, you know. Um, Seventy, eighty years is like a dot compared to eternity. You know? mm. So um, I will have. I don't have any. I don't have any answers uh, why God took Katrina so early, you know. Um, but I will have eternity to ask Him. And uh, but you know, when we go to that place, uh, we'll be blown away. I, I believe, you know. And no more Revelations twenty one. You know, no more tears, no more pain, no more sorrow, no more suffering. You know, the first thing that God does. And the New Jerusalem is to wipe our tears, and you know, as if it's saying, you know, "No more tears, my son, my daughter." You know, mm. um, it's a New Jerusalem. I'll be with you forever. Um, and imagine, you know, living for eternity with your loved ones. You know, so I put my mind. You know, keep, keep your mind on things above you know those promises god's promises so i hold on to god's promises you know um yeah um yeah so so i i apologize on behalf of all disciples who mean well and say (laughs) something that's hurtful because i'm sure i have or i'm sure you know you know many of us do we mean well and uh you know i i um i had a professor who said that uh Job's friends were doing a really great job until they opened their mouths. Exactly. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I think yeah. sometimes we want to fix things or we want to give reasons why or we want to try to explain. And, um, you know, there there was a, a brother that shared about that on in the um, in, in the this conference that we had on on justice um, a month or a month or so ago. Um, he shared about just his he, he's a black brother and and and. Um, he shared a little bit about his story and and with his father and different things that he went through. But he just talked about how, 
sometimes you, the best thing to do is just be silent and just sit with someone in their suffering and not try to explain it or not try to say, hey, I relate or, oh, yeah, this happened to me, too. Or, you know, because <laughs> that doesn't you mean you trying to help, but it doesn't help. Uh, yes. And uh, because of some of the intense stuff he was feeling, especially over the summer. Um, yes. So I think that's probably one lesson for all of us with the pandemic and grief and all of that, plus the racial injustice and divisions in our country and all that is just learning to be still and be silent and listen, <laughs> you know, and, uh, and that ties into musically. Like I, I feel like that's the biggest lesson I've been learning musically. I know you mentioned like my strumming, playing aggressive strumming. And, um, I feel like that's been my style of, of playing, um, and singing, you know, I came to, to leading worship from being a song leader, like with in college at a campus devotional with no microphone and you just, you're just projecting, you're just loud, right? To try to help everybody sing. And you're not really even listening to yourself or thinking about there there's, you know, it's, it's just loud. Right. And so everything's always been loud and uh, the pandemic is just, everything is quiet we've been live streaming our services for over a year from my house <clears throat> and uh a lot of times it was just me mm -hmm. at the beginning and my guitar and then we slowly added more musicians and stuff like that but it's so it's a different experience you know doing the live stream than you know, sunday in the past it's like you have the a whole church is singing and you're just kind of you're sort of lost in the crowd of all of them but uh, now with the live stream, it's just, it's so isolated. Like whatever I'm doing on my guitar, whatever I'm doing, my voice is so isolated. But I've been learning to, the more nuance, you know, playing softer, singing softer. Um, and it, so it sort of ties into what I've been learning spiritually. It just being still and just listening and not being so loud, not being so, um, you know, brash, but just sort of learning to play really soft, softer finger picking, not using a pick, you know, just using my fingers more and, and, uh, you know, c kind of learning more nuance, uh, has been good for me, but Amen. to, yeah. to, to, to put the spiritual and the, <laughs> and the musical yes. together. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, the, the pandemic helped, uh, with, uh, just pl playing more and having more time. Um, most of my, my, my tuning now are half step lower. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, and I've been learning a lot of uh, this this chords. Uh, yeah, I, I've written like five, six songs on this chord progression. Like... Nice. Something about major seven, major yes. seven uh, chords just makes you feel like, ah. <laughs> yeah. just relax, right? And just enjoy yes. the sun. And, you know, it, 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 that when you first started playing those chords, it reminded me of like India Ari or, yeah. you know, just kind of a chill, right? A nice. Yes. Yeah. That's great. So much respect about R&B uh, music now. Yeah. So it's just <laughs> That's great. so much freedom and so much uh, feel um then i've been learning how to um like the last song was uh what was that i don't want to feel this way it goes okay it's the bass right here yeah i i, I see those youtube that's awesome. I feel, I feel like uh, yeah, I see those musicians yeah. on YouTube that use their their yeah. Yeah. their meat of their hand as a kick drum like that. That's kick pretty drum. cool. Yes, yes. Yeah, so, that's um, awesome. Is that one you've that. recorded or no? Yeah, uh, that's 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 the song that I wrote um, for my wife. Uh, just reliving those uh, moments when we we had a we we, we fight and okay. You know, I don't want to feel this way. Yeah. <laughs> I've been waiting for you. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. So it's like an R&B, you know. That's awesome. Uh, 
like this. Well, you mentioned lyrics earlier. Yeah, that's the yes. hardest part for me is is trying not to be too on the nose. I mean, with worship songs, it's easier. The lyrics are easier because I can just pull from the Psalms. I can pull right yes. from the Scripture. Yeah. Um, you know, use the the images that are in Scripture, and it's just good, right? But with yeah. writing love songs or writing a something that's you know to my wife it's just so much harder it just comes across so cheesy you know cheesy. <laughs> yeah oh yes, yes. one of the my, the first song i ever wrote from for my wife is uh you are my friend the time i spend with you i wish would never end i fall in love with you and i see your smile you know that was back when we were first dating yeah. So it's just it's fun, but it's super cheesy, you know. Cheesy, yeah. And the second oh, one I what wrote was that was, song that you wrote was the apple of my eye. Yeah, apple of my eye. Yeah, that's pretty yeah, cheesy was beautiful, too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's hard. Yes. Um, you know Elias Delo, right? Elias Delo. He, he used yeah, to yeah, be yeah. here. He's uh, in the ministry. Uh, they, they just moved to Texas, Austin. I told him he has a couple albums, and uh, his 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 love songs are so like good. They're not. They're not cheesy at all. They're kind of metaphorical and just deeper lyrics and and just really That's good. Cool. So, yeah. I, I'm I'm trying to learn to to get a little, uh, a little more metaphorical and stuff. It's hard though because a lot of um, a lot of the best song. I mean, I don't I like worship music, but when I'm just listening to music, I don't typically listen to worship music as much. I listen to more uh, uh, alternative rock or folk or um, you know post punk was what i grew up with you know like the smiths and the oh uh, wow. you know the uh in, that's what i liked you know when i was in high school was post punk um like um you know the cure and the smiths the cure, yeah. echo and the bunnyman was like my favorite and you know oh, stuff wow. like that so um but a lot of uh a lot of that stuff comes from uh kind of angst or from you know hurt or sorrow or and my life is so good you know <laughs> it's like uh i don't you know but 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 there's a lot that's bad in the world too and so um like on that ties of the light album i was pulling from other stuff that maybe isn't even my own experience but just um other people's experience or other hurts or other sorrows or other pain or mm-hmm. hardship or the spiritual struggle or you know things like that so but, yeah, uh, that, that, that album is amazing, bro. There's just so many. Uh, I hear, um, I can't pinpoint w- which band, but uh, definitely definitely the first one has a U2 uh, vibe. Oh, yeah. It. On my way, that was on my yeah, way. Yeah, yeah, that's very U2-ish, yeah. Very U2-ish. Yeah. yeah, I love that. Um, this is the same, you capture that emotion where maybe when we meet God, you know. Yeah, that's where it's coming from, yeah. Yes, yes, and it's just glorious, man. It's beautiful. But um, th- that song, um, Clean Getaway, is still my favorite, bro. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, it's just because when I was driving, man, to Lake Tahoe, it's so beautiful. And I'm playing your music, and it just ties everything, man. It ties to the light. <laughs> oh, amen. That's the point. Yeah, yeah. that's good. And that's good. You've been to Lake Tahoe, right? No, I've never been up there. Oh, oh man, it's beautiful. Yeah, yeah um, it's we'll have beautiful. To go. have to go. Um, yeah, we, we hiked. And you know, just you know, just slow things down. Um, yeah, that's and awesome. We, we need that. Yeah, amen. So I know I um uh, I I know I gotta let you go here soon. But um, yeah. where, what's been the crossover between your I know you the, the work for the church that you do the volunteer work that you do for the church and then yeah. your songwriting. Like, are a lot of your songs um. Are, are they songs that you sing in church or like, uh, for example, here, like, let me uh, go back to your album here. Uh, wait. Oh, wait. Let me see. I don't think I did the audio here. Hold on. Oh, yeah, it is. Um, which is the one I we had a couple of your albums on in our car, you know? Yeah. yeah. And uh, we would listen to them. I think this one and this one. That one, yeah. But uh, like some of these really sound like songs that you would maybe sing in church. Uh, that's with Caitlin Torres, yeah. In yeah. Home. She's awesome too. She and Rachel she, both are. Yes. Oh, I turned it down. That's why. Aren't we standing on you? 
So has she ever done this one at church? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I My is the Sunday for me. She just sounds like a pro, man. Is, is she? Is she doing something with her uh, music? Or with yeah. Her she. she uh, I, I'm gonna try it. I've been praying about it. Um, I'm, I'm gonna help her uh, release her own album. Maybe um, I just write the songs and and have her sing it. You know, that's great. Or yes. maybe uh, imitate you, or we we have our own band name. And, okay. Yeah. Let me let's hear a little more of this because yeah, she, her voice is so good. So good. Yeah, I yeah love, she's I, amazing. You know, uh, I recorded um, a few vocalists, uh, but something about her voice that is just so solid, man. Mm. This room is just not insulated. You. Yeah, and it's so um, you don't have to do much. Um, such a strong, solid vocalist. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's like yeah. I don't. I feel that way about like my daughter's voice has something about it. That I really like it just kind of grabs you. And, um, but, uh, and there, there's just certain singers that it just grabs you. So, you, you know, you don't want to, you don't want to push her into the spotlight too much, you know, because it's just the, the music industry is so awful, you know, but, but you do feel like everyone should hear, you know, this talent, you know, everybody. Yes. And that's how I feel about her voice. Like, uh, but Caitlin's voice is so good, and and her her delivery yes. and her her nuance is so awesome and so yes. good. So, I, I the mix on that is uh, the, your production on that is is good too. I just noticed too. I like that little that little riff that you're playing with the electric. The, yeah, yeah. It sounded kind of a John. That's like a John Mayer thing. He he puts oh, those. Man. Yeah. I like John Mayer, man. Yeah. John Mayer. Dun, 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 I like him so much that uh, I bought his guitar, the OMJM. That's the oh, okay. most expensive guitar. <laughs> oh, man, and I rarely play it because uh, it's too expensive, you know. <laughs> he, I, I, he, I, 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 he's so into, you know, he just he he's so into the uh, Fender, you know, Stratocaster yes. and the yeah. the, the blues. Yeah channel he's amazing blues guitarist and amazing yes. on the strat but i miss the acoustic you know he, he doesn't do much acoustic anymore at least that oh, i yeah. see um he's yeah. such a great acoustic player that uh it's yeah, like, he is. yeah yeah keep keep the keep the blues but don't give up your acoustic stuff because yeah. i love yeah. it you know? and so. I, I don't know if you ever covered uh john mayer but he is one of the hardest uh artists to cover you know because his guitars are just so oh, way yeah. out there like yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. The only one I I I learned uh, why Georgia why. It's really hard though. I, I like it's I, hard. I can kind of play it, but not good enough to like record it. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. Then it goes to that. Yeah. And he just uses his two fingers, man. And he Mostly uses his thumb the, the, the too. Like he, yeah. like he uses his thumb for hammer-ons in that song. Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing. Oh, it's yeah. Amazing. I saw him live uh, before the pandemic, and he is he's amazing, man. I, we had a great time. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Uh, I bet he's uh, great um, to see. Yeah, yeah. We should watch a concert someday, bro. <laughs> that would be fun. That would be <laughs> awesome. I would love yeah. that. Have you seen the Hillsong um, live? No, uh uh No, yeah. I know we yeah, the, the amazing production, you know, it's just amazing. Yeah, yeah I've and seen the, the songs are so it. simple. I've seen, of course, a lot of their YouTube videos, of course, you know, but I've never actually been there live. Yeah, yeah I, I love live music. I haven't seen a lot um, of worship live. I've seen Gunger live. Um, yeah. Beautiful things, yeah. They're, yeah, they're they're really, he's incredibly gifted. They're really amazing. Yeah. I've seen uh, Lincoln Brewster 
couple times at great guitar at the, player. Yeah. Nam. yeah, he's incredible. Yeah. Uh, at the Nam show, um, saw Matt Redman at the Nam show. Uh, he was great, you know. But uh, you know, I <clears throat> I've seen more uh, secular bands live. You know, Coldplay is my, probably my favorite Coldplay and YouTube yeah. to see live. There's such yes. great shows. Um, Tom Petty live was one of my favorites. Oh man! Years That's ago, so, he yeah. writes so many great hits. I didn't, you know, I actually didn't. I kind of appreciated Tom Petty, but once I saw him live, I was like, "Oh man, this guy writes the best like hooky songs. They're just so hooky." Yes. yes. So, uh, yeah. but anyways, whoa! Somebody's <laughs> opened my garage door. <laughs> <laughs> wow! Yeah, but, um, but Brian, I uh, really appreciate you uh, throughout the years, man. Yeah. Um, it's amazing uh, how, where, where God has uh, brought me from, you know, your open mics at uh, Red Bucks. Remember that? Yeah, Red Bucks. <laughs> Red Bucks. It was owned by this Korean uh, yeah. uh, lady, and she was so nice to me. You know? Yeah, you were always there. Yeah, because I, I, I didn't have any money, you know? And, yeah. And I was hungry, you know. You, 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 you know, all I could afford was... Uh, a dollar uh, coffee and three refills for 25 cents. So I'll just drink that and suppress my hunger. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. You were, you were uh, quite smoking a lot too. You probably were spending all your money on cigarettes back then. <laughs> I remember you would have to uh, take a break sometimes to, to, to get your cigarette fix. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Oh, you remember that? <laughs> <laughs> Not to confess yes. your sin for you, sorry, bro. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You you uh, you met me at the right moment um, when I was really one of the lowest point in my life, and uh, I don't know if I told you this uh, story, but that same night I was reached out by this white uh, Buddhist. Oh, really? Yeah, and yeah, and and then uh, I'm, I'm grateful that. Uh, Started the Bible with you for months and months, and well, I remember uh, you were wrestling right at that moment with even if you believed in God or not, and uh, yeah. And didn't we do a? Wasn't there a? Uh, didn't we go to like a a Doug Jacoby thing or something about the existence of God? Yeah, uh, yeah. There was a, I think it was Friday night or Wednesday night. I'm not. There was sure, some kind of time that was sort was of perfectly a, timing as about video or whatever. Okay. Yeah. Something about if is there yeah. a God or not? Yeah. But uh, yeah, no. It was definitely yeah. a highlight and, of my life getting to study the Bible with you, and so proud of you and all that yeah. you're doing. But you know, it's, it's so amazing that you know I remember listening to you guys uh, practice with D. Thomas and uh, the vocalist with uh, with uh, Connie Ivy. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And I was in the basement, and it's like. I always wanted to beat songs, but uh, I didn't know how because you know, I was so shy and scared. And, <laughs> and so I would listen to you guys. And I remember at one point someone came out of the door. So what I did was hid in another, another room so that I didn't know why I did that. <laughs> <laughs> was it where was this at that church building? Yeah, the church building, the basement. You guys, we, you guys were practicing, and uh, just want to hear the vocals and the harmony. You know, and that's always been my my weak. You know, I'm not really a strong vocalist, and uh, I don't harmonize. Doing a, well. uh, <laughs> I guess uh, recording an interview. Good, with, uh, my related. Daughter. Happy recording birthday! Interview, that's I'm right. so sorry. That's okay. It's okay. <laughs> I just have to bring in. Should I do it later? Oh, uh, we're almost done. We're okay. just wrapping. There was that. Yeah. So I'm forever grateful, bro. Um, you've been. Uh, my spiritual hero, my musical hero. Um, I know I'm not going to be as good as you, but uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, I appreciate your your encouragement, but, uh, but uh, I love your songs. I I just want everybody to hear your songs, and uh, they're so good, so so many of them. And I I hope you just keep keep getting better and better. And I love uh, I love how you're lifting up others too. Like I love hearing Rachel sing with you and caitlin sing yeah. with you and because because of and, what you uh, did to me bro you're the first one who recorded yeah. me and just paying it forward yeah amen so, so. Um, and, yeah i fell in love with uh, recording the, the moment you recorded me and, uh, yeah with my two chord songs now i progress to maybe three four <laughs> <chords>. <laughs> me too I'm, a, I'm, I'm up to three or four these days yeah 
<laughs> keep yeah, it simple. I, that's I, I think that's good though. Keep it simple. You know, there's a lot of people who I, I think John and I were talking about this. There's a lot of people who never get their stuff out there because they're just waiting for it to be perfect or to try yes. to uh, find some unique thing that's never been done before. It's like, nah, just share what you have, you know, and then keep exactly. building on that yeah. and uh, keep growing. So, so anyway, well, I'll let you go. It's great being with you. Thanks yes. for taking the time. And uh, uh, if, if, you, if there's one album that you were going to say people should listen to uh, to kind of get introduced to your music, which album would it be? I would listen to your album first. Man. No, <laughs> which Michael Agabau album? <laughs> Ties to the light. Buy it. This is uh, such an amazing uh, production. You know that was amazing. Uh, but uh, I, I love the last two uh, albums that uh, I released. Um, I think it was Never, Never Alone, Alone and Glory and God. The Glory of God. Yeah. Yeah, they're both Cause, great. Because uh, um, I think I recorded those in Logic, and I was I was getting better at recording in that. Yeah, I would I would say yeah, both of those. I mean, all of them are good, but there's a lot of really catchy songs on this Never Alone album. So I would say start with that Can one. Can you play that one with? Um, uh, I think the what was the album? It's not that one. The, the previous album. <laughs> oh yeah, on the. Um, that one, the, the glory of God. The uh -huh. first one, your greatness and glory. I, I work with this great, uh, awesome sister. Um, oh, yeah, I didn't recognize that voice. Who is yeah, it? It's, uh, it's, um, I didn't recognize her, her, uh, that vocal, but she is good on. <laughs> You're like dancing. But... I just use all logic on the, the effects. Okay. That's a live bass though, right? Gracious Lord, like Moses of old, we long to see your greatness and glory. It's an amazing vocal here. Gracious Lord, like Moses of old. Yeah. It's so amazing how she can just uh, play around with her vocals, and I wish I can sing like that. Yeah, I love I love recording with the, uh, you know, I, in my ministry in my local church here, I got Paulette uh, Spradlin yeah. and yeah. Uh, Betty Collins. Betty, so yes. Yeah. Record a lot with both of them. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. All right, brother. Well, great seeing hey, you. Thanks, Brian. Have a great day. Say hi to Jen and the hang out soon. family. And uh, yeah, we'll talk to you soon. Yeah, well, we're vaccinated. Um, my wife is vaccinated too. So, we're getting uh, ours this week. So oh, you are? Huh? Yeah. So you're we'll, getting the Moderna or a Pfizer? Moderna. Yeah, Moderna. Moderna. I had the same thing. So, so yeah. Uh, yeah, let's hang out. Let's make some music. I can't All wait right. till we can uh, perform again too. Yes, do a coffee we'll shop do. or reach out, man. Yeah, sounds great. All right, All right. see you later. Love you, bro. Thank Love you. Love you, too. Bye. Okay, bye.